Ask someone about their heart rate and it can start to seem like a bit of a competition. I mean, how high can you get your maximum heart rate? How low can you get your resting heart rate? In actual fact, we're all individuals and so you cannot compare your resting heart rate to anyone else's. However, your resting heart rate can tell you a lot about your personal health. We're here today to tell you why you should pay attention to your resting heart rate and learn about it and what it can tell you. Temperature, quality and quantity of sleep, health, BMI, age, medication, activity levels, these are all factors that will affect your resting heart rate. We'll look into why in just a moment, but first, what is a good resting heart rate? Well, I personally don't like this question because it's different for all of us. And believe it or not, you don't actually get a prize for having the lowest resting heart rate. In fact, it's worth noting that if you're trying to record it and you're trying to re-record your resting heart rate and get it as low as possible, it often ends up having the opposite effect and will be higher than it would be naturally. Therefore, if you do have a smartwatch or a similar device with continuous heart rate monitoring, that's probably your best way to take your number from that because it'll calculate and give you your overall resting heart rate and maybe even day to day. If however you don't have that and you need to actually measure it yourself, it's best to try and do it first thing in the morning when you're feeling really relaxed or maybe just another time of day if you finish a yoga session or something like that when you'll get your best score. Okay. Okay, now you know what your resting heart rate is, let's look at what constitutes a good resting heart rate. In theory, anything from 60 to 100 can be a healthy resting heart rate. And if you're fit and active, or training for triathlon like we might be, it's normal to see in the range of 40 to 60 beats per minute as a resting heart rate. And some elites and professionals will get even down into the 30s. I've personally measured mine as low as 38 in the past. but. Uh, that's the extreme and it's not a competition. You don't have to get it as low as possible to be as fit as possible. In general, a lower resting heart rate does indicate good health and fitness, hence why you'll often see athletes mentioning how low their heart rate is. And as a result, it does mean that most of us kind of aspire to having a low heart rate. And you'll be pleased to hear that there are actually quite a few things we can do to help lower our resting heart rate. However, sadly, there are also a few things that we just can't affect. If you live a very sedentary lifestyle and you do very little activity in a day, then your heart will gradually become less efficient, meaning basically your maximum heart rate will start to drop, your resting heart rate will go up, and you'll have less of a range of your heart rate. And I think we all are aware that being active is good for our overall health, and one of the main benefactors of that is our heart. And if you are someone who has a relatively high resting heart rate because you live a sedentary lifestyle, well, you'll be pleased to hear that by doing some brisk walking, maybe a bit of jogging or some swimming on a regular basis, we'll all start to have a really positive effect. And it'll also reduce your chance of having any cardiovascular disease, increase your life expectancy, and I think most importantly, it'll help you to really feel good. On the other end of the spectrum, you can actually train too much. Now this might be a bit hard to get your head around because when we train, we get fitter and our resting heart rate gets lower. But training is a form of stress. And if you do too much and don't recover enough, that stress is gonna build up and you're actually gonna reflect this in your resting heart rate. So it's a good idea to get to know your resting heart rate and monitor it, measure it at the same time every day. And then if you see it rising, you might get an early warning sign that you might be pushing it a bit too hard. Just like physical stress, mental stress can affect our hearts. Now, short-term stress like a project at work or an intense training session is fine, but chronic stress is where the problems can arise. If you are in a state of stress for a long period of time, then you can start to see your resting heart rate increase. This can also increase your chance of a heart attack or even a stroke. So it's really worth being aware of your stress levels and how to manage them and what triggers them. So if you are someone who's aware that you have potentially chronic stress, then look at methods such as reading, relaxation, maybe even meditation, anything that can help you physically and mentally just lower those stress levels. We all know sleep is vital for our general health, not just as athletes, but as human beings. And unfortunately, it's one of the first things that goes as life gets busy. And you will see this in your resting heart rate. If your resting heart rate is creeping up and even a good night's sleep, you can't get it down. You may be suffering from some chronic fatigue and you need a good night's sleep or a few good night's sleep. Uh, try to improve not just the quantity of sleep, but also the quality of sleep and get that resting heart rate back down to its normal levels. If you're in an environment that's incredibly hot, then you're all over heart rate 
is just naturally going to be higher, both in resting and in training. So just bear that in mind before you start to get a little bit concerned. And again, with being somewhere hot, you can quite often get dehydration if you're not replacing those fluids. Although, don't forget, you can still be dehydrated when you're cold, and that effect can also cause your heart rate to go up. This is one we can't do anything about. We're all gonna get older, and as you get older, it will affect your resting heart rate. We're all born with pretty high rest in heart rates and then it drops as you get older until you're a young adult. And then it should stay fairly low if you stay fit and healthy throughout your adult years. But as you get older and creep into your 50s and 60s, your rest in heart rate will increase. And at the same time, your max heart rate will decrease. And there's not really much you can do about this. However, you shouldn't really notice this unless you're looking way far back on what your rest in heart rate was 10 or 15 years ago. It's not something that you should see creeping up day to day. Another factor to consider is medication, as certain medications can affect your heart rate and therefore your resting heart rate. So if for some reason you are put on new medication, then just make sure that you're aware of its effects and how it can affect that resting heart rate and then get to know what your new normal is so you've got something as a base marker to compare against. We left this one to last because that's where resting heart rate can really be useful, especially as an athlete. If you're getting ill, much like the stress of overtraining or just general life stress, it can send your resting heart rate up. And it can actually happen before you know you're ill. So if you're regularly taking your resting heart rate and you see a sudden increase in your resting heart rate, you may have contracted an illness. And so what, you might ask, because it's too late, you've already contracted it. But by resting before you actually feel lousy and ill, you can give your body time to fight that illness, meaning that the illness doesn't get as bad and you can get back to training and general life a lot quicker than if you had pushed on through for a couple days before you actually came down with that illness. It's a pretty good thing to know. So monitor your resting heart rate and you could be uh, heading off that cold before it gets you into bed. Oh, 37, 36. I mean, remember, having a low resting heart rate is not a competition, but hopefully you've found this interesting and you've enjoyed it. If so, then do give us a like, and if you want to support the channel, you can do that by subscribing. Right, I am now off to do some exercise, some relaxation, and get a good night's sleep. 